This case contains a disc which contains a game that no longer works, and regardless of how good or bad you might think this game looked, that really sucks, considering that this case with this disc only allowed people to play said game for a measly two weeks before it was shut down. If you ask anyone who had a chance to play Concord during its brief initial life what the game was like, they will likely describe it as something between entirely playable and genuinely great. Though unfortunately, being essentially good is not enough to guarantee an online multiplayer game's success anymore. Since its release, countless problems have been suggested as the root cause of Concord's swift failure. And after playing the game myself and trying to see everything it had to offer, I certainly have a few ideas of my own. It seems obvious at the very least that Concord didn't do enough to convince players that the game was worth their time. But beyond that, there are many lessons to be learned from the game's genuinely disastrous launch. From marketing failures to the risks of chasing trends and of live service in general. For me personally though, Concord's most interesting mistakes lay in the basic premise at the heart of this experience, the characters who inhabit its world, and the key hook that is missing from the game. What? Most people never get what they want. Set your expectations. Low. And prepare to be disappointed. For those who never had a chance to play Concord during its two weeks of life, which, based on the numbers, is essentially everybody, it's worth providing some context as to what exactly this game was. Concord was an always online game which fitted comfortably within the hero shooter genre, meaning that it was built around multiplayer skirmishes set across numerous diverse maps, where players on each side would choose from an expansive roster of pre-built heroes, each with their own unique weapons and abilities, to hopefully defeat the opposing team under the specific conditions of several varied modes. The story and lore loosely associated with each match is something I'll get back to later, but first it's worth repeating that from a pure gameplay perspective, I think the game mostly succeeded. While I'm not the biggest hero shooter fan in the world, I did play enough Overwatch back in the day to at least unlock legendary skins for most of the core characters before the game turned into an overly monetized Battle Pass nightmare, when they added the number 2 to the title. So given that that game is my primary reference point for considering a shooter like Concord and looking at them side by side, Concord came out looking pretty good. While it obviously didn't offer as many hero characters, it was nice that it was less strict about the classes a team could use in games. And for what it's worth, it felt like most characters could have been inserted into Overwatch with just a few minor tweaks, because the gameplay felt that similar. I'd hate to suggest that Concord was just a simple clone of Overwatch or any other hero shooter, but suffice it to say that anyone who enjoys the genre would have found it pretty easy to jump into Concord, though obviously, most of them didn't. Because even though almost everything about the gameplay was good, even though it worked and it was fun, I don't think it was ever more fun than an established game like Overwatch. It might have been about the same at times, and maybe there were moments and certain aspects which felt like they had an edge over Blizzard's offering, but overall I definitely can't say it was obviously better than existing hero shooters. And if it's not better, if it's not offering something entirely different and unique, then it's sheer madness to expect players who have already invested so much time and money into a different game with a comparable experience to suddenly jump ship. Meaning, in the end, that they basically made Concord for a non-existent audience. Within a competitive genre like the hero shooter, 
it doesn't ultimately matter whether they've built a good game or not. In order to succeed, either their competitors have to do something incredibly anti-consumer and stupid, or they have to offer something so exciting and unique that it will convince a critical mass of players to give it a try. And so, the problem with Concord's gameplay, I think, is that there simply wasn't a notable point of difference. There were some unique features, but they clearly weren't enough. They talked about the structure building abilities as something unique in the game, and while that could have been interesting, it felt like a very small part of Concord. Plus, with a hero shooter, any ability that is tied to just one or even a few characters is not really a mechanic that can move the needle for players overall. There was also this odd feature where you could take the class bonus of the hero you last used when you changed to another. And while the effects of that are obviously more wide reaching, it's not something that is even easy to explain to someone, let alone an advantage which can be widely marketed. Arguably, the lack of monetization and battle passes at launch was also a feature that could have attracted players. I spent quite a while in Concord's menus trying to find a place to buy digital currency, but while they planned to add a store in their first proper season, it was nowhere to be found for the game's debut. They decided, not unwisely I think, to have all cosmetics unlock purely through progression at first, so players only needed to pay the upfront cost of the game to get access to everything, just like in the good old days. While that worked for Helldivers 2 though, that game benefited from having a very unique hook and, post-launch, insanely good word of mouth. With Concord, on the other hand, it just meant that far fewer people were trying out the game in the first place. And it's worth remembering too that while free-to-play games like Fortnite and Overwatch don't require a PlayStation Plus subscription, you did have to pay that monthly to play Concord 2 which is another big minus in my eyes. So basically, there was no hook here, unfortunately. Almost bafflingly so, to be honest. There was nothing which you could point to on paper that made the game sound exciting and new. When describing the game in general, I want to say that Concord is like Overwatch, but... or except that... Though try as I might, I cannot come up with anything to finish that sentence in a compelling way. Imagine if it was like Overwatch, but every character is made out of Play-Doh. Or it's like Overwatch, except that every match plays out in zero gravity. It's like Overwatch, except that it's set in the same universe as the hit NBC sitcom The Office. None of these elevator pitches are good exactly, but they are something that would set the game apart from other hero shooters. Or maybe the only unique selling point that Concord really needed was a far more exciting selection of hero characters. We have come to once again inquire about our free gunner status. I am prepared to bask in glory. I don't think there's going to be any basking today, buddy. We're still locked out. But. But did you tell them I have drank of the ancestral blood trees on Kalos? And that I keep a very tidy ship? A hero shooter is nothing without its heroes. And in Concord's case, these heroes were referred to as Free Gunners. Because in universe, they're all part of a group called, you guessed it, the Free Gunners. And at this point, I'd like to explain to you what exactly this group is or stands for. But as much as I've tried to do my research, I have struggled to find a way to summarise who the Free Gunners are in a compelling way. Apparently, they're a group of mercenaries or smugglers or something, but they're competing with one another to steal fuel or data or something, while simultaneously going up against an evil organisation called the Guild or something. Alongside some fancy cinematics, there was, admittedly, a lot of lore to be found in the game. There were many pages of details about the world and its characters, mostly delivered through this galactic map. I read a great deal of this context, but while the minute details might be there, the basics 
are not, really. By which I mean the central premise just doesn't quite work for me. The game is set up with the crew of a ship called the North Star, a presumably ragtag group of misfits who have just joined the Free Gunners. And from that point, every match is, apparently, one group of Free Gunners fighting a rival group of Free Gunners. It's entirely possible that the primary goal of their world building here was just to find a cool word to describe their characters other than heroes. And so, maybe Free Gunners does that for you? It's a perfectly cromulent made up word, but I honestly think they could have done better. Trying to force any premise into a hero shooter like this is always going to be difficult because the second you have a random assortment of oddball characters fighting each other on a quirky map, that premise usually falls apart. So maybe the error Concord made was simply overcomplicating things with extraneous details when all players really needed to be told to introduce them to the game was that these are the good guys and these are the bad guys and anybody can fight for any side. A multiplayer game like this has so little time to establish the basic premise underlying the conflict in each match and so little time to make you care. And so that orientation process should ideally offer a clear idea that places an emphasis on fun and the characters should then emerge from that concept. Unfortunately, though I tried to get into as many games in Concord as I could before it closed down, a combination of low player count and the inability for most people to even buy the game towards the end meant that I was regularly waiting a long time to play a match, if I even got into one at all, and many of those skirmishes were over just as soon as they started. That is to say that while I had a chance to play as every character in Concord, I didn't get a chance to decide definitively which I thought were the best or worst characters gameplay wise. None of them stood out as the most or least fun necessarily, but I do think that their abilities and weapons felt distinct enough to keep the game interesting for a long time. There's plenty to say about these free gunners with regard to their interesting look though. The design of Concord's cast of characters has been widely criticised for a variety of reasons, some of which are a bit silly and many of which are perfectly valid. I have to begrudgingly admit, for example, that giving these characters a bit more sex appeal probably would have helped increase sales numbers, though I highly doubt it would have been enough to save the game. Ultimately though, these free gunners just don't feel like fleshed out likeable characters. They all have their own backstories, but none of it is very compelling. And most of these designs are just unavoidably the exact opposite of eye-catching. And I don't think it's immediately clear why that is. Many of these outfits feel lumpy and unrefined, or in other cases, overly smoothed out and simplistic, with washed out colour palettes. Of course, inherent to the game is the customization of each character, which comes only after some time spent unlocking these outfits, or eventually buying them from the store. I am certain that down the line there were some very cool costumes or skins planned for each of these characters. So maybe these uninspired default designs were partly to make those better outfits seem that much better. Still though, there are obvious failings with the basic concepts for each of these characters. And I think if you wanted to pinpoint the reasons why, my guess would be that this is the result of design by committee. Characters who have been through so many iterations and changed so many hands over a long development process that they have essentially lost most of their personality and have become just not very memorable or distinctive, even if on paper they probably should be. I enjoyed playing primarily as this large-headed space woman for quite a few matches, largely because of her jetpack floating ability which let you fire rockets from above and was always fun. After a few games though, I suddenly realised I didn't even know what this character was called. In fairness, I couldn't have told you any of their names after only a few hours with the game, 
And while that isn't unusual when you're only just familiarising yourself with a game's world, it does speak to the wider issues with onboarding in the game. Plenty of people on the internet were mocking these character designs, when really they needed people fawning over their mysterious sniper lady, drawing bad fan art of the alien character, or crying about how much they want to cuddle the big robot guy. Unfortunately, nothing about these characters or this world was especially interesting to the general audience. As I said before about Immortals of Avium, I genuinely think that people want to support new IP like this, but it still has to offer something good and worthwhile to be deserving of people's money. We're gonna have company. Dark Cutter crew is inbound. Copy that. We will show no mercy. Copy that. But we will honor their starship, because we follow Free Gunner code. That's right, we do. Playing online video games in the modern day is sort of like living through an extinction event. In the past decade, there have been too many multiplayer live service games to count, and yet few of them have survived long enough to find a stable audience. And those that have succeeded are required to change and evolve so frequently to keep players interested that the game they are a year or two from now might barely resemble what they look like today. Whether a live service game wins or loses though, their launch version is always doomed to be consigned to history, unlikely to ever be played in that form again. Concord's demise was just a lot swifter than most. If you can find a working Pong arcade cabinet, even 50 years from now, you can still play 1972's Pong in its original form. But after just two weeks of life, Concord is unplayable. Unless you have the technical expertise to rig up a private server and the friends to fill out the lobby. I know a few people who, after their favourite online game was shut down, have continued to run private servers using questionable workarounds for a couple of years now, and in that way they've continued to keep the game alive. But regardless, the small group still playing that game is dwindling by the day, and it's almost impossible to expand a fanbase for a game which doesn't even really exist anymore. There are many games which were widely derided at launch before eventually becoming treasured and appreciated, if only by a select group of people. But most multiplayer games in the live service age will never get that chance. Something fascinatingly inherent to multiplayer games in general is that their intrinsic value as a game is almost utterly meaningless unless enough people are playing. Who knows how many unique playground games or poorly conceived ball sports have been lost to time for the exact same reasons throughout history. Maybe one day soon we can get bots which accurately resemble a jumbled variety of human playstyles, and a single person can revive a game like Concord and play a realistic multiplayer match with a realistic lobby. But even then, the value of competition which is essential to such games is completely absent. On the other hand, an offline capable or single player game, even if it has fallen out of favour, could in theory survive like a story in a book for as long as there is a device that still runs it. It could conceivably survive for a hundred years and still bring joy to a fresh pair of eyes. For the sake of the many talented developers who worked so hard on the game, I hope that Concord is eventually resurrected in some form and given another chance. I don't know how likely it is to ever capture the imagination of the hero shooter audience, even as a sexier free to play game, but still. I really think that Concord had the foundations to become something great and I think there is a chance that they could turn it around. My greatest hope is that if it does come back, they manage to find some unique hook which will keep players playing. Ultimately though, even a relaunched Concord is unlikely to stick around for the long haul. Whichever way you look at Concord, it's a sad and strange situation indeed, when sealed copies of this case with a disc in it are somehow selling for twice as much 
as they did when the disc actually played a game. Did you get a chance to play Concord before it shut down? Probably not, right? And what do you think are the primary reasons why the game flopped? Let me know in the comments and please do like and subscribe if you'd like to hear me talk about more video game stuff. Otherwise, I'll see you next time around.